We also saw some, some questions on the internet before, so reading some comments saying that they were confused, but then we're running slow motion, so how will the game run in real time? And I mean, of course, it's, it's all fine. It's 60 FPS, it's solid, rock solid, run it on. And a really annoying thing for me as a gamer has really been the, like, if I turn the SAR on, you can see how my, the clip on my weapon cuts off the rays in the reflection if you look to the bottom left. And same thing when I'm, if I'm aiming down my sights, then I just find a really good example of this. You can see it, it cuts off the reflection, which is just a really important thing to, to focus on. But with ray tracing, it's just, it feels a lot more just responsive and you don't get this blurriness, but yeah, ray tracing is, it just gets you more immersed in the world. It, it feels really good to play with. It's, it's really great. So, yeah, so that's uh, one of the things that I really liked most with the result that we got was that the scene with ray tracing now is very consistent. Um, you see the reflections as you expect them to be and they stay there. Um, we still, in certain areas, need to try a color distance. So, in theory, maybe not everything at all points in time will be reflected. Uh, or it showed obviously which are really, really far behind. But what we see with the performance on the machine that we have in here, that we can push the boundaries much further than what we thought was possible uh, up, to, uh, up to recently. So I'm, I'm really positive that we can get this to feel super consistent at all, at all times um, for, for the player. Of course, um, implementing all this in a large and complicated engine and very content-driven engine uh, like what we have in Battlefield uh, 5 and Frostbite uh, is quite a massive engineering effort um, to make sure that we can translate and understand that we do not only hit this triangle um, with this material but also apply all the lighting models and the entire Frostbite's rendering model onto the uh, reflected objects, including particles. Um, as you know, particles are typically rendered as very, very many uh, additive transparent triangles. So we kind of need to intersect all of those and with a really good approximation, sum up the uh, total value of all those intersections and then present that back to the uh, surface and, and apply the color from that, uh, from that result. Uh, and I think that the particles um, and the explosions and all this dynamic mix is really worked out really well, I think. And it's also quite performant uh, now. Well, yeah. yeah, that's uh, I think that's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.